So $10 won't even get you a good burger and fries anymore, but investing just $10 a week will get you to $1,000 a month in dividend payouts. I know this sounds too good to be true. I thought the exact same thing, so I did the research. In this video, I'll tell you the overall concept that makes this possible. We'll go over real stocks with the performance to prove this style of investing could have actually worked for investors in the past. I'll give you the raw math behind the concept. I'll address the huge problem with this math, share with you strategies to work around it so we can actually get to our investing goals, and we'll go over one easy investment we can all use as a baseline to maximize our chances of success. So with all that being said, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not qualified to give you that sort of advice, but you're more than welcome to learn from the research I'm doing for myself. So you can think of this as financial show and tell with me, Raj B. So rich people exist, and yet so many of us don't believe that we can have a lot of money too. That's something reserved for other people for all these different reasons, right? But did you know that last year alone, 500,000 new millionaires were created? The reason why you and I can invest $10 a week and build wealth is because of compound interest. As this relates to dividends, when you buy a stock that pays a dividend, you get a payment for owning it, which comes from the money that the company makes. This means that if you buy a dividend paying stock consistently over time and reinvest the dividends, you get more shares and the amount you get paid as a dividend goes up. But the secret sauce is that investments don't stay stagnant. The best types of dividend investments increase in value and they increase the dividend they pay per share. This is how we take less than one day's worth of lunch money a week and turn it into a huge chunk of cash flow every month. Of course, an investment that pays out a dividend consistently, even better grows that dividend year over year, and even better goes up in value overall sounds too good to be true. But we live in a day and age where this is in fact reality. There's two groups of individual stocks with very high barriers of entry called dividend aristocrats and dividend kings. In order for a stock to be a dividend aristocrat, it has to be in the S&P 500, has to have paid out a dividend for 25 years, and that dividend has to have grown year over year. In 2024, there's 60 six of these companies. Target, McDonald's, and Walgreens are all on this list. In order for a stock to be a dividend king, even more exclusive, the company has to have paid an increasing dividend for 50 years, and in 2024, there's 53 of these companies. Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, and Johnson & Johnson are in on this list. When I first started dividend investing, I really wish I just did the math. If I had gotten a proof of concept at the beginning and made a solid plan to get to my goals, I could have been further along with my investments. If we invested an initial one thousand dollars and put in ten dollars a week or five hundred and twenty dollars a year into something that grew in value four percent year over year that paid out a four percent dividend and grew that dividend payout by four percent every year after 50 years we would end up with over twelve thousand dollars in annual dividend payouts so technically it is possible to make a thousand dollars a month in dividends with only ten dollars a week but this is just a hypothetical scenario and we can't go back in time and invest in a mcdonald's and coca-cola the benefit of this data is that it shows us two key problems and if we solve them we are so much more likely to actually get to our dividend goals first a reality check we have to accept the fact that not every investment is going to have returns like this so the solution to that is to pick good investments based on data available diversify and invest more money than we think we need based on hypothetical calculations as a buffer again not financial advice just the investing reality i've accepted the second problem is that 50 years of investing is an insane amount of time just to make $12,000 a year in payouts. I think you and I would like to enjoy the shade of our money tree before we turn 80. Good for us though, there's some things we can do to speed this up. So the first thing we can do is front load the investment. Meaning, if we're able to put in a lump sum up front and invest the same amount every week, we get to $12,000 a year in dividends six years sooner if we put $5,000 up front instead of $1,000. And we get to that same level of dividends 11 years sooner if we invested 10,000. Of course, that's not practical since people don't just have thousands lying around to invest. So the other option is to increase our weekly contributions. If we invested $20 a week, we would get to $12,000 in annual dividends eight years sooner and putting in $50 a week would get us to that same level 19 years sooner. In reality, most people are going to start with small investments, whatever is possible, and progressively increase their investments as time goes on, as they earn more income, and throw in lump sums when possible. You can play around with the calculators on your own, but the key takeaway is that the more money you invest, the earlier you invest, and the more often you invest, the better off you'll be. So if you're not on track to hit your dividend goals, that's okay. Everything big started small, and big things take time. So 
So keep building. Now, of course, we're all interested in actually getting to $1,000 a month in dividends and beyond. I can't tell you exactly what to do because I don't know the future, but I can show you what I'm doing. It took a few years, but I've worked my way to the point where I'm investing $5 a day comfortably, and two of those dollars are going to my core position for my dividend portfolio. That position is SCHD, or the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF. Its holdings are a combination of several companies, so it's not concentrated to one individual dividend stock. These stocks are picked based on the ETF strategy, the size of the positions are adjusted quarterly, and the positions themselves are adjusted yearly. In the past 10 years, the price is up 128%. The dividend has continued to grow year over year up 12% in the past five years, and has a current dividend yield of 3.4%. So based on historical data and the strategy, SCHD is my go-to for a dividend investment, and I'm branching out from there based on SCHD's shortcomings. So long-term, I have a few dividend goals in mind. I want a growing portfolio, a reliable dividend, and a high dividend. One investment isn't going to cut it. I need to branch out and take a little more risk and invest more than I originally planned. This, of course, has its pros and cons, but because I did this, I'm now making $100 a month in dividends with just $6,537.40 invested. Check out how in this video on your screen or click the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you over there.